Hello everyone, today is the end of my challenge with Fedora. I know, I know, I was not supposed to stop right now and I'm gonna sound like a quitter. But the truth is I'm, I'm, I'm just bored out of it. So let's talk about it. Oh boy, like always, let's start with a little bit of context. So you know, like I've been participating to those challenges. And this is the second one I'm gonna fail. I feel pretty bad about it. But on the other side, I need to share with you my feedback. And uh, obviously, like I was supposed to stay like one month on it. I believe I could stay one month on Fedora without a hic. The issue is that there is like a small roadblock who kind of like type of my nerve really, really hard. And those roadblocks are actually like blocking me in some of the work I want to do on this channel. I'm going to get into the detail after, but I, I, I really want to make sure like you, you, you get the idea. So I know my buddy Vincef is going to go through it easily because it doesn't have exactly the same usage that I have to do with my computer and it's okay. And maybe some of you are going to be pretty good for Fedora. I would say like most of you guys are going to be super happy with Fedora. So Fedora is not really a bad distro. You have to understand that Fedora is, as they say on their website, the Linux leading desktop. They have like this image and this reputation about always innovating and being always on the front of all the innovation. If you see it from a technical standpoint, Fedora is supposed to be the upstream for Red Hat and also for CentOS. So it, it's really like the the distribution which is going to bring all the new stuff to the community and just to mention some of them because some of like most of us are actually benefiting from it whatever distribution you are actually using so i'm going to go in list uh, the first one is systemd you have also pulse audio they pushed uh, better fs or btrfs which is a pretty good file system i know some of you don't like it but it's it's still a pretty good innovation in my book you have pipewire who saved my life. I have to say it because the the big uh, previews like Pulse Audio, Jack, blah, 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 was such such a Mayhem. And Pipewire for me is, is really one of the best things uh, they actually push toward the scene for the Linux community. So Pipewire, uh, now you have Wayland. So I'm, I'm kind of like mitigating on Wayland, but I think they were the first one to, to push Wayland as default on their distro. And now they are finally dropping X11 in the next release of Fedora, so Fedora 40. So you can see like they are pushing uh, the world of the open source forward for the Linux desktop. And that, we can say the opposite. They are there and Fedora guys, whatever you think about Red Hat or, or whatever, they are doing the job on, on this side. Also, something I want to point out is the fact they have a special like way of releasing their big upgrade. And if I understood it correctly, like let me know in the comment below. And they have like this six months like pattern where every six months they're gonna upgrade everything, like the, the big number. So when you go from uh, let's say Fedora 38 for 39, you have like all those big upgrades. But because uh, the time window is only six months versus like 12 months you are almost at a rolling point, okay? So you, you you are not that far behind. You might sometimes like be behind, but you are not that far behind, which I believe is a, is a pretty good approach. I, I still love uh, the rolling edge better for my usage, but I can understand why some uh, users, they love like this cycle. It's kind of like a short cycle in terms of like, you know, uh, stable release, which is pretty good. So now we talk about the overall like vision of the distro. Let's talk about my experience and I'm going to go right away with the first phase, which is downloading an ISO. And when I went through the download page, it's actually impressive. You have so much option. This is amazing. And you can see how, how solid it is. So I went with my favorite type of ISO, which is everything boot here. This is how they call it. It's a net install ISO. So it's really small. I think it's like, 600 or 700 megabyte you put it down there and when you go through the install process i'm going to share like some of my b-roll when i did install uh, the, the the distro 
It was super smooth. So I know some users that don't like Anaconda. You know, it's, it's really like a user, like a subjective approach. Me, I had no problem with it. It's doing the job. I was able to choose whatever I wanted there. So I was pretty happy about the install. Um, when I had to choose my option, I went with KGE because uh, GNOME is just not possible for me. So I went with the, the spin of KGE. Everything went well. I, I have really nothing to say about the install. Like it, it went well. On my first boot, I had to right away install uh, the RPM Fusion repository to have access to the NVIDIA driver. And I follow like the, the tutorial, everything went well. I installed the driver. Again, everything went clean, nothing to say about that. So I had a little issue, but I think I'm going to talk about it uh, after. And it's related to the NVIDIA driver. Huh? What's new? <laughs> so now I'm going to talk about the good point. And something that really surprised me is that I was able to install all the applications I need without touching Flatpak. Most of the packet are most of the packages are super recent. And I, I was super happy about that because Flatpak is good, but if I can avoid it, I feel really better about it. And man, like I, I was a good surprise. So not no flat pack on my distro, that's a plus. With my previous experience of uh, Fedora Kinoit, I noticed that DNF was not the fastest uh, package manager ever. But I have to say, even if certain cases it, it was not good at all, and I'm going to mention that uh, in the bad section, I would say overall it was not that slow. And I would say if I had to choose between uh, this one and OpenSUSE, I think this one is a little bit faster uh, that the one uh, provided in OpenSUSE, I think it's called Zipper, if I remember correctly. And the one in OpenSUSE was really a, a big concern for me because I felt it was really slow. But I think this one is a little bit faster. So it's not Pac-Man type of speed, but I have to say it's super easy to handle. Everything seems like normal compared to learning Pac-Man, for example, and logical. But I would say it's, it's not there yet. And to give you an example how good it was to install like packages there, I want to show you OBS. Because OBS normally is a package that you have to go through Flatpak or to compile yourself if you want to have the expected result. But there, not only I was able to install the RC2 version, which is like the in-development version, which I really like. It's super stable, by the way. When I start to dig into it, they incorporated like WebKit GTK, which is the equivalent of the OBS browser plugin. For all the content creators out there, this is great because <laughs> it has been a big roadblock for a year now. And the only way to go through that was to in install the Flatpak version. And guess what? They have it here. No problem. So I, I was pretty neat, I have to say. And the last point is that I was able to install like DaVinci Resolve. No problem. Everything works. So obviously, I still have the same issue that I have with all over the distro, but this is related to DaVinci Resolve, but it works. And I just had to install the driver, fix the issue related to DaVinci Resolve. If you have any type of issue, I really encourage you to go watch my OpenSUSE video about it because what I solve there, it actually solve on all the other distro. Now let's talk about the bad point and what really pushed me out of this challenge. The biggest one, in my opinion, is related to the fact that the kernel installed right now doesn't work for kernel tree produced RPM. So what does it mean? It means that if you compile your kernel yourself and tries to install it, you're going to be in big trouble. It just won't work. So there is trick. You can go, there is a way of doing it, but it's just a headache. And I think at this level, when you are at the front of the innovation, you should be able to fix those issues. So I know for most of you, having a custom kernel is not an issue, but for me, it's a big one because when you start to touch and enjoy the Linux TKG kernel, you can go back. And this for me is a big no-go. I don't know how long it's going to take them uh, to fix the issue, but it has been more than a month now. And uh, yeah. It's still not there, apparently. So the other way you could try to get your hand on a custom kernel 
is to use what they call like the Fedora C-O-P-R, copper. I don't, I don't know how you pronounce that. But the idea is like, let's say you want to install like the Liquorix kernel. You're going to tap Liquorix kernel here. And you're going to go for it. Now my issue with this one, and you're going to see like this is in real time, okay? I'm searching for this. And it's so long. It's so slow. Compared to the AUR, this is really bad. Like the experience is so bad. They are just getting like kind of like um, discouraged. And now you have to go through this page, trying to find the one you want. And it's slow. It is so slow, bro. I, I don't know. I had some of my buddies, they told me they had the same experience. So if you want to use that, well, good luck. You have to see it as it is, like just good luck. And this, for me, is a big problem, okay? Like uh, when I think about all the innovation where they're able to bring and they can't, you know, provide a website compared to like the a AUR where everything is like so fast. It's just, I don't know, for me, it's just mind blowing. So this kind of like discouraged me. And I think you, you need to know like <laughs> how it is. Another issue I encountered was related to DNF. And DNF can be kind of like capricious. You know, sometimes you want to go fast, sometimes it doesn't want to go fast. And it can be really nerve breaking. So let, let me show you something. This is a screenshot and I had a big upgrade. I went through all of this and here you can see the speed. Then overall, like I have nothing to complain about there. Like I'm, I'm happy with the speed. Everything is cool. And then I arrive to the packages of Discord here. Actually, it's one big package. And look at the speed. I'm going to zoom on it for you guys. You need to see that. 333 megabytes, 213 kilobytes per second. It took me like 20 minutes to download. Like how? How is that possible? I don't know. Like To be honest, I don't know. But it happens sometimes and you are like looking at your screen terminal you're like what is happening dude like why so that, that was that was an issue another example i want to share with you concerning like gnf and how sometimes it's like really slow it's when you start to make a, a search because i wanted to look around like pipewire because pipewire for me is a big problem right now um the packages the latest packages on arch and also on, on this distro actually uh, they are totally broken for my hardware. I had to downgrade. I tried to search like the PyPower packages. And so this is what I've done. So th this is my, my actual terminal. And when you launch a search, DNF search PyPower. So wait, I'm going to try to increase it a little bit. You see DNF search PyPower. Like that, it looks better. And it's going to have to rebuild, I guess, their um, database here. And when you go through the database, some of them, like some of those downloads, they are going to be pretty slow. And it took me so long to go through that. I, I don't know how it works behind the scene. I don't know if it's a connection issue. I don't know if it's the way it's built, but it is like so long. So you type that and you, and you wait, and you wait. And you're like, oh, did, did I freeze? Like wh what happened? And then everything goes fast, right? So you got access to everything. So this is pretty cool. I, I like the aspect out of it. And I noticed it's, it's just the first time. So when you, when you load everything and you do another search, then it's going to be way faster. But this is annoying. Dude. So I know I'm, I'm really like, you know, uh, search, searching like the, the little beast here, like, you know, like being a little bit hard toward Fedora, but you have to think there is other distro which are doing that way better. So why can they do it? That's, that's all I have to say. Um, now, uh, in terms of like, packages and the way they released you have a good example here because you, you might think that because you are on, on fedora it's going to be like stable but i can tell like some of those packages they are super super recent pipewire here is the latest latest version which is cool i like it but the truth is like this one is unstable at least on my system so i will have if i want to do everything i want i'm going to have to downgrade to this version which is super simple uh, compared to Arch, I have to say, because you do that through the, the DNF. But it's a good and a bad point because some users, they might come here and think it's actually stable, but you will see like some of those packages are super, super recent and it might break still. So 
something to think about, guys. You are not safe either. <laughs> and now the last point. I'm going to keep that for the end. Uh, we're going to check our friend from NVIDIA. And this was also like a big no-go for me. And I'm going to tell you why. So as you can see here, I have the NVIDIA driver 535-12903, which are the latest production release. So production branch release, which is cool. The issue I have with that is that if you want to take advantage of Wayland, and if you want to, for example, like your, use your G-Sync monitor, well, you're going to be in quite of a lot of pain because you need the latest, like, uh, it's not even beta anymore. It's like development branch version, which are the 545. So those drivers are not perfect. But the issue I have here is that if I want to use them, I have to go on the website, I have to download them and go through the whole process. And I'm telling you, in terms of quality of life, this is just not fun. Could I make it work? Of course I could make it work. But there is other distribution out there which are doing it, doing it like super easily and you don't have to go through this whole hassle. And in my opinion, that's, that's again like a, a negative point for Fedora. So as you can see, Fedora is still a great distribution. I would be like really rough if I would say something like Fedora is not a great one because definitely a good distribution. Now, is it for gaming? Is it for someone who want to take advantage of their hardware? And I'm not talking about crazy hardware. Let's say you have an NVIDIA card and a G-Sync monitor. You want to use it on Wayland. Well, you might be in a little bit of trouble there because you're going to have to install the driver manually. You're going to have to, you know, go through all this hassle. And there is other distro which are just making it way easier on you. Uh, the other point which was really a roadblock for me was the fact that I couldn't use my kernel, like customized kernel. So obviously I can use the normal kernel because, well, it works, right? And I think right now this is the first distribution which has increased um, the VM map count size, which, which is just awesome. Like, don't get me wrong, but I can't use my custom kernel. The COPR is like a mess for me. Like finding something is a real pain. And I'm like, dude, like why, why can I just take advantage of that. And to be, to be honest, I just, just don't want to have the headache to go through all of this. I just want to have some things that work right off the bat. Like I'm just, I'm just done with it. And with Arch, I, I found that. So yeah, you might be able to play your game, but you might not be able to use your hardware at 100%. And if you are on this side, could do to you. On my side, I rather have control of everything and being able to change the kernel and the driver as easy as that. That's the only difference. So I'm out. Um, guys, that was my uh, little review of Fedora. And I hope I didn't disappoint you by quitting the challenge. But in my head, I'm like, this is just too hard. I could have let it on the side and just not do the challenge, you know, and pretend like I, I did use it 100% of the time, but this is no who I am. And when I decided to switch with it, I went 100% with it. And now I'm just tired of it. Those roadblocks are just too big. I hope this video like give you uh, some form of, you know, like information, context, maybe ent entertainment. I don't know. But if it is the case, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel and if you want to support the channel financially uh, don't hesitate to do it by becoming a YouTube member or a member of my Patreon page guys thank you very much and uh, see you in the next one uh, next one is going to be a challenge on Arch yes I already won this one <laughs> bisous bisous